What you're seeing here is a time-lapse video captured using a custom-built camera slider. Using 3D printed parts and some Arduino code, this portable time-lapse slider works by moving and panning a camera by very small and very precise increments. In this video, I'll let you know the design decisions I made when making the slider and some of the limitations those decisions created. Hopefully, this video will be able to help you as you look to create your own camera slider. Uh, my ultimate goal was to use this slider for nature time lapses. That meant that I had to be able to take this slider with me on a hiking or backpacking trip. With this goal in mind, I had three priorities for the slider. Portability, ease of use, and battery life. You should keep in mind that my priorities were shaped by my intended use case. Uh, for instance, if I intended to use a slider in a controlled indoor environment only, I would probably have prioritized rigidity and stability over portability. The slider on screen is a slider by the company GVM that I mentioned before. You'll notice that this style of slider has one stepper motor mounted to the side with a rubber timing belt pulling the camera along. This slider doesn't have a motor to control the pan of the camera, but it does have this neat system in which you can adjust the angle of this rod here, which will use the linear motion of the camera to passively pan the camera as it moves along. I never attempted to implement such a system, but I thought it was worth mentioning because you'll notice that implementing another motor to control pan on a setup like this isn't so straightforward. You need to connect both motors to the same control unit and that would just create a mess of wires. My first attempt at building a camera slider used this design with a stationary stepper motor using a timing belt to pull the camera up and down along some PVC pipes. It technically worked, but it was pretty fragile and a pain to transport. To disassemble and reassemble it, I would need to stretch the timing belt over the pulley here. Uh, it just wasn't very user-friendly or portable. Plus, it could only move the camera on one axis, the linear axis. There was no pan or tilt. So there does exist another kind of slider, which I have only seen implemented by one company called Syrup. I believe that the company has been bought by Manfrotto, and I don't know if the sliders are still in active development anymore. Anyway, they used to make these sliders called the Genie 1 and then the Genie 2. That worked by having a stepper motor pull itself along a track using a length of paracord. I opted for this design in my build for a couple of reasons. First, the use of a single length of paracord instead of a loop of rubber timing belt meant that it was much more easy to disassemble and reassemble. Secondly, by placing motors for linear movement and pan movement all in the same module that moved along with the camera, I could simplify the wiring between the stepper controllers, the stepper motors, and the Arduino microcontroller. With this design in mind, I then had to pick out the stepper motors that I would use. I opted to use stepper motors with built-in planetary gear reductions, mostly as a way to achieve sufficient torque with lower power draw. For the motor that pulls itself along the track, uh, I used a NEMA 11 motor with a 5 to 1 gear reduction. For the panning motion, I used the same NEMA 11 motor, but this time with a larger 14 to 1 gear reduction. This was in part for increased torque, but mostly for increased resolution. Most of the time, in a single time lapse, I'm only going to pan the camera by 90 degrees or less. If I didn't use a gear reduction, then the resolution of my motor uh, would be 200 steps per rotation without micro-stepping. That means that a 90 degree pan would only give me 50 steps to work with, which just isn't enough for smooth movement across hundreds of frames. With a 14 to 1 gear reduction, it takes 700 steps to turn 90 degrees. That extra resolution allows for smoother pans, and while it does introduce some gear backlash, I haven't noticed this to be an issue in practice. So with all the parts picked out, I modeled all the 3D printed components I would need using AutoCAD, which happens to be free for students, which is why I'm able to use it. Uh, I used PETG filament, which holds up better than PLA in the high heat of direct sunlight, because I was planning to use this outside a lot of the time. You'll see that the stepper motor in charge of panning protrudes at the bottom. This helps to lower the center of mass of the carriage. This whole thing is quite top heavy, especially with a camera mounted on top. And unlike professional, unportable sliders that lock the carriage in place between two poles, my design has the carriage sit on top of the poles, which is much easier to assemble, but means that the camera could fall over. You'll see that the ball bearing pieces at the bottom pop out. I did this just because it was much more efficient to 3D print the parts when they were separated. The carriage is held together by four M3 screws. You'll see that I melted in some M3 threaded inserts to make this design possible. Inside, you can see the stepper motor used for linear motion, as well as the custom-made PCB that contains two stepper controllers, as well as an Arduino Nano. The module is connected to power and to a small handheld controller through an RJ45 jack, meaning I can use any Ethernet cable to connect it. 
That handheld controller can be seen here. It contains a four button module and a small OLED panel. The poles of the slider are two CPVC pipes. I found that they were not firm enough on their own to handle the weight of the carriage and the camera, so inside of each is a wooden dowel for added support. Each pipe fits into an end block that's 3D printed, uh, and then these blocks have holes and ridges for me to secure a piece of paracord so that the slider carriage can pull itself along that length of paracord. So with everything assembled and all the software written, I powered on the system to find a huge flaw. When the motor would pull itself along the length of paracord, the paracord would always get tangled on itself, stopping the whole system abruptly. I tried printing a new part to try to guide the paracord along and keep it from overlapping on itself, but that didn't fix the problem. I know there must be a way to get this kind of setup to work, since Syrup sold sliders with this exact concept, but from the pictures and videos I've seen online, I'm not sure how they did it. If you know how to get around this problem, please let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to hear. Instead of the motor pulling itself along a length of paracord, the motor now pulls itself up an incline and then lets itself slide back down in a controlled fashion. This means that there needs to be an incline for the system to work, and that incline also can't be too large or the slider will fall off because it's so top heavy. So this all isn't ideal, and it's the biggest weakness of the final design in my opinion, but at least it does work within the constraints set by the design. The final product is quite compact, especially when compared to other sliders on the market. It can easily fit inside a normal size backpack with the poles strapped to the side. It takes me about three and a half minutes to set up, not including putting up the tripods. Then I have to set the start and end points, minimum and maximum speeds, set my intervals, smoothing methods, and then let it run. I have to admit that it looks a little precarious, like the camera is about to fall over, but so far I haven't had any issues with the camera falling so long as I am careful in the setup. In the right conditions, the slider works very smoothly, and I'm happy with the results. It does struggle a bit when there's wind around, but that's not totally unexpected. I'd say that stability is an area this design could see some improvement in, as I think it should be able to work a little bit better under windy conditions. Another thing I would do differently is to use a different microcontroller with more memory. The C library that I wrote to calculate step intervals with smoothing takes up a decent amount of space, and together with the other code I need to get the system working in its current state, uh, I'm unable to add any new features without exceeding the memory capacity of the Arduino Nano. I'm sure that I could optimize my code in some ways. I'm not a professional programmer, uh, but I just wish I had gotten a microcontroller with more memory that would have given me some breathing room to add some more features. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope I was able to provide some info that helps you make the best possible slider for your use case. Let me know in the comments if you see any other places for improvement in this slider, and thanks for watching.